Last week I uploaded the first episode of my series Baseline to Pro. I decided it was time to try and live out my childhood dream and start my journey to try and get my first ADP points. And since posting that video, I've been really taken aback with the amount of support and nice messages I received. It's honestly so crazy to see how many of you are actually interested in following along to see how I get on, so I want to say a big thanks for that. This week I'll be going over how to actually get ATP points, my plan to achieve this, and I'll be getting advice from someone you might just recognise from another YouTube channel. So, let's get into it. So it's kind of three different levels to professional tournaments. At the top you've obviously got the Grand Slam and ATP tournaments, and then you've got the Challenger Tour, and then at the bottom of professional tennis you have the ITF Future Circuit. You're awarded a different number of ATP points depending on what round you reach at each tournament. Obviously the higher up the levels you go, the more points that are on offer. I'm going to put on the screen now a table breaking down how many points you would receive in different rounds across all the different types of tournaments of professional tennis. So if you're interested, give the video a quick pause and read through that. At the bottom of the table, you'll see that in order to get one ATP point, you have to win through your section of the qualifying draw and then win one round in the main draw of an ITF Futures tournament. If you manage to do this, then you become ATP ranked and technically classed as a professional tennis player. There's only about 2,000 people in the world who currently have an ATP ranking. Now, a lot of people seem to think that you have to meet some certain requirements or criteria to even play in an ITF Futures tournament, but technically anyone can enter. However, your chances of getting in are pretty slim because the order of acceptance is as follows. At the top of the list are people with an ATP ranking, followed by people with an ITF World Tennis Tour ranking, followed by people with a national ranking, and then finally everyone else is just put in some random order. Now a few years ago there used to be no such thing as the ITF World Tennis Tour ranking, and I used to be at the top of the group of people who had the national ranking, which was great because it meant that whenever I entered the Futures Tournament, I'd be high up on the alternate list and get into qualifying most of the times I entered. However, after the introduction of the ITF World Tennis Tour ranking, and since the LTA changed the rating system, I've been put in the bottom group, which means I'll be so far down the entry list, I have absolutely no chance of getting in. So there's only two ways for me to get in now. First option is to request a wildcard and hope that they give me one, which is very unlikely as they tend to only give these to young promising juniors. Or the other option is to sign in as an alternate on the day, hoping that everyone in the draw doesn't show up or someone's injured or sick and chooses not to play. So this is where it gets tricky for me because it means I have to play a game of guessing and probability, which is not ideal when I'm on a budget already for these tournaments. So this means that I'm going to have to enter as many tournaments as I can every week and just wait for one where I'm reasonably high up the alternate list and I think I have a good chance of getting in if a few people don't show up. But I'm also going to have to make sure the cost of this trip is not going to be really expensive as there's still a high risk I don't get in and I don't want to waste a lot of money on a trip where I don't even get to play. Now it is worth mentioning that some tournaments do have pre-qualifying which you think would be ideal, but the last time I played pre-qualifying, it was actually more of a wildcard tournament where anyone on the whole entry list for the main draw qualifying and alternate list could enter, and I actually ended up playing someone who was seeded in the main draw who had a ranking of 300 in the world in my first round of pre-qualifying. So, in order to get into the qualifying on the regular, I need to have an ITF World Tennis Tour ranking, and to do this, you need to reach the last 16 of the qualifying draw, and you do that by winning one or two matches in the qualifying. If you're confused about what the ITF World Tennis Tour ranking is, just think of it as kind of like just a way to differentiate people on the alternate list who haven't got their ATP ranking yet and reward people who have been close to qualifying more times than people who haven't. So bearing all this in mind, I kind of created a little plan for myself to try and get my first ATP points. And the first thing on that list of things to do is to make a system where I can track my goals, do match reports, and really have a clear system to manage my tennis and really check how I'm improving. And I've been doing this over the last few months on Notion where I've been making a template for myself where it's essentially like a tennis planner. I'll show you more of this in my future videos. Then the next step is over the next month or so, really iron out some of the weaknesses in my game and start getting some match practice against ATP ranked opponents. Then once that's completed, I'm going to start traveling to one or two futures per month and sign in as an alternate. Hopefully I'll get into quite a few of them and then I'll try and get an ITF World Tennis Tour ranking so I can get into these tournaments more consistently and be closer to getting into the futures within the UK, which will cut the costs of my expenses quite a lot. However, if I'm not getting into them, I'm going to have to grind it out within the pre-qualifying and play some wildcard tournaments to earn my spot within the qualifying. 
Okay, so that kind of concludes my plan. And it's actually been a few days since I recorded that part of the video. And during that time, I had a little bit of a light bulb moment. And I kind of thought, why not send a message to someone who's been there, done that, got their ATP points. And I decided to send a message to one of the YouTubers that I've been following this whole time. And I knew Simon had seen one of my videos before. So I decided to reach out to him to see if he'd be up for giving me some advice. And he actually replied really quickly saying, send him some questions on WhatsApp and he'd reply for a few voice notes. But that actually ended up that he was playing a futures in Florida at the time and he made the final. So he couldn't get back to me straight away, but he managed to find some time whilst he was at the airport to reply to my questions. Okay, so the first question that I asked him was, just do you have any general advice on getting points? Just anything that I didn't really know before. So let's see what he said. So my best general advice on getting points would be to not focus on the points, man. The biggest focus is just trying to get better, try to play the best tennis you can and just focus on your kind of journey. And then the points is more of a result, you know, of your kind of work that you're putting out there. So really focus on, you know, putting your best effort, just working hard and trying to do the right stuff over and over again and not focus on the points. Like let the, po like, the points be a result of all this stu other stuff that you're doing right. Okay. Oh. okay, so I actually think that's really good advice because throughout my whole tennis journey so far, I've always found that I get more anxious for matches and I get a bit more stressed when I'm actually focusing on the result, trying to win the match or trying to get a specific ranking goal. And that's kind of what I was kind of a bit worried about when I started this journey for getting my ATP points. I focus too much on that and then forget about just focusing on the process and then just playing one ball at a time. So I actually think that's really important. And when I actually do a video coming up where I set more specific goals within my training to try and get better at my different weaknesses, I think that's what I'm going to really focus on the whole time. Rather than thinking about getting points, just treat every match as just a way to improve and see what I could do better in each match and kind of get the ATP points as more of a byproduct. And if it never happens, it never happens, but just keep on focusing on trying to improve. Okay, so the second question I asked him was, how would you plan tournaments if you were getting your first points again? And then I kind of did a little follow-up question to that as what is a good ratio of trains tournaments? Because I know a lot of people have different opinions on this. I know some players that literally just play tournaments all year round, have train on the go, just do a bit of hitting and just think matches after matches after matches is the way to go. And then you speak to other people and they do like a training block and then a couple of tournaments and a training block and a couple of tournaments. And it'll be really interesting to see what his perspective is on this. Um, planning tournaments, I mean, obviously it is a priority to make sure you're getting into tournaments. So obviously just seeing what kind of tournaments you can get in. And, but once again, like I'd like to refer to my previous message, you know, as much as you can, don't focus on the points, just trying to focus on just playing the best tennis you can. And uh, yeah, just play the long game, not the short game. So it's not, it's not about just trying to sneak in a point here or there. I'm just going to stop there because I think that's another really good point is that Sometimes people get so stressed out about going to different locations to try and sneak in some points here and there. But I actually think it's a really good idea to just play every tournament, try and get better, not get too stressed about trying to get the points at a specific tournament and just play as many as you can and just keep playing and keep trying to improve. I think it just carries on from the previous point a little bit. I think it's better to just focus on the, the progress, just trying to get better and doing the right stuff and the points are going to come. Um, a good ratio of training versus tournaments, I think, is very individual. I think a lot of people, you know, like to play tournaments every week and week and they need a lot of match play in order to, to feel good mentally. So I think that's very uh, personal, in my opinion. But, uh, I mean, just in general, like looking at a, a normal tennis schedule, if you look at it like that, you have 18 points that you count. And out of 18 points, usually most people try to aim to play 25 tournaments a year. So then you can just kind of go half and half. So usually a good kind of template to work out of is two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off, something like that. That's cool. That kind of just sounds like whatever works best for you. But I think you said about 25 tournaments there. Half and half. So usually a good kind of template to work out of is two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, okay, two yeah. weeks off. So two weeks on, two weeks off. Like I think I think playing one or two features a month is, is good for now. So I think, I think I was accurate with that in my plan already. And the final question I asked him was, any, are there any mistakes that I should avoid or things I should know before I start this journey? And when it comes to mistakes uh, that you should avoid, uh, my biggest, uh, my advice here would be to make all the mistakes you can, man. Just, just try to learn from it. That's part of the progress, you know, just, just try to do the right stuff. And then whenever mistakes occur, just try to deal with it and make the most out of it. It's the same thing when you're on the tennis court, you know, learn from them. As long as you learn from the mistakes, it's, uh, it's never a mistake, you know. So just go out there and, and enjoy, man.
best of luck and uh, keep crushing it. Let me know if you need anything more. I'm, I'm always here and hope you enjoy it. Have a great one, man, and uh, I'll talk soon. Ciao. Okay, cool. So that's really nice advice, and it's really kind of him to do that reply for me and be, be a part of this video. So, so yeah, I think I think that's really helpful. Definitely learned some stuff from those replies, and yeah, I'm excited to go out, keep improving, and try and get those ATP points.